Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market. Today, it's Thursday, July 25th, 2019. I am your host, Dan Russo, Chief Market Strategist at Chicken Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chicken Analytics. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email. Hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. Gives you some daily stock ideas for you to consider, and it's completely free. So let's dive right in now. U.S. equities were mostly higher on Wednesday's trading. The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ hit new all-time highs, but the Dow was a laggard on weakness in Boeing and Caterpillar. Treasuries were stronger with the curve flattening. The dollar was stronger versus the euro, little changed against the yen, and weaker against sterling. Gold finished up 10 basis points in WTI crude, settled down a little over 1.5% despite bullish inventory data. At the sector level, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> financials, comm services, and tech outperformed. Consumer staples, REITs, and materials or your underperforming sectors. As we get to the desk this morning, futures are slightly higher to start the day. It's uh, somewhat mixed. Asian markets were mostly stronger overnight. China and Australia outperforming. European markets are stronger. Treasuries are stronger across the curve. Dollar is stronger against the yen and weaker against the euro. Gold up 20 basis points. And WTI crude is rebounding. It's up, uh, up about 1% on the day. So new all-time highs as earnings beat rates are ahead of average. Companies are exceeding analyst estimates at, uh, in higher percentage than they have, you know, looking back over the one-year average and five-year average. So that's been enough to start to drive the market higher here a bit. Support is in the 2,900 to 2,950 zone. No price-based resistance at all-time highs. Uh, we are marginally at all-time highs from a closing basis. RSI is in bullish ranges, but there is a small divergence, right? We want to point these things out as we see them. Market made a new all-time high yesterday. RSI made a higher high. Does that mean you run out and sell everything? Absolutely not. But you just want to be aware of it. You want to understand the dynamics of what's going on in the marketplace. Ultimately, price is the most important metric, and that is continuing to move higher. Jake and Money Flow sees a nice spike yesterday. You have two consecutive days with closes near the high of the day. That has spiked Money Flow and kept it bullish. So, Indicators are bullish, right? The RSI is still in bullish ranges. Shake and money flow is bullish. Markets at all time highs. We're trading above support. Earnings are coming in ahead of expectations, right? So right now, the good outweighs the bad in the marketplace. Continue to look for bullish and very bullish stocks in leading industry groups when those stocks become oversold. We're going to highlight one for you here today. Uh, moving along now, our market in a minute. What are we talking about in our note to Shake and Analytics clients? Thursday, so we do some breath work, right? So we've already touched on the all-time highs for the S&P and the NASDAQ. Long-term breath metrics remain strong, right? Percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving average, the advanced decline line, those are strong. However, short-term metrics fail to confirm the highs. What does that mean? It means the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average has not made a new high with price. Percentage of stocks above their 20-day moving average has not made a new high with price. Again, similar to what we were just talking about with the RSI. Is that a bearish signal? No, but it's something to be aware of when the market is at highs. Right now, the key level for us for the S&P 500 is at 2950 mark. As long as the market's above 2950, you stay the course. Uh, bullish strategies make sense. Leading stocks, leading industry groups. Speaking of leading industry groups, aerospace and defense remains a leading industry group. We'll take a look at that a little bit later in the show. Futures point to a mixed open today, as I said. Taking a look now at the power bars, all still skewed towards the positive. Seven to five to, for the Dow. Although the Dow was down 25 basis points yesterday, Dow being a price-weighted index uh, dragged lower by two high, high, high-priced stocks, Boeing and Caterpillar. S&P 500, 45 basis points to the good, 141 bulls, 71 bears. NASDAQ, nice outperformance yesterday, 33 bullish or very bullish stocks, 10 bearish or very bearish stocks. Big outperformance by the small caps yesterday, up 1.65%. 592 bulls, 287 bears. We'll see if this is the start uh, of a change here for small caps. Too early to say one day does not a trend make, uh, but that is notable, notable outperformance. 120 basis points of outperformance relative to the S&P 500. So bonds uptick, sending yields lower. And according to the Chicken Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bullish. 
Moving along now to our stock of the day, we have Connect One Bank Corp, ticker symbol CNOB, closing at 2326, up 3.15% yesterday. Power gauge rating for CNOB, CNOB is very bullish, did a very strong earnings performance, very strong price volume activity, as well as very positive expert activity. The financials are middle of the road, but the 20 factors, five in each of these four categories, give us our bullish rating. Bullish rating, very bullish rating, actually. Strong trend, strong industry group. Type of name we want to consider. Very bullish rating, outperforming the market. Money flow, a bit of a mixed bag here recently, but for the most part, it's been bullish. Stock is oversold. It's above a rising long-term trend line. This is this looks good, right? CNOB checks the boxes. Probably, you know, five out of the six boxes, if we drop the checklist, would be checked. The only one being money flow here as it's turned mix. However, what's point out, the company is scheduled to report earnings here this morning. So why don't we see how the earnings play out? Kind of interesting that the stock jumped 3% in front of earnings. 3% yesterday in front of earnings. I uh, want to probably give this one, let's see what they have to say this morning and see if it presents an opportunity to get involved. I think there's a couple of ways you can play it. You can play a pullback 21 to 22, or you can play a breakout. Uh, but either way, this is the type of stock that you want to consider on the long side of the portfolio. Let's get the earnings announcement out of the way first. Turning now to our sector tracker, looking at the movement of the major sectors over the last five days. And we can see the tech is top of the list, and that's encouraging, right? Tech is the largest weight in the S&P 500. So with tech at the top of the list, that is likely bullish for the overall market. Look at financials now. We've been talking about financials for a bit and how that the performance of financials has really been driven by the insurance stocks. We were waiting for the banks to get in gear. We'd love to see the financials start to do well on a relative basis because the fundamentals for the financials as a group have been there, right? And banks are reporting decent earnings and we're looking for the banks to start to get in gear. We could start to see that here. And if that's the case, if the banks are able to join the insurance companies, financials could start to do well. It's, uh, we are watching it closely. Industrials, materials, energy, and discretionary all higher over the last five days. Healthcare is relatively flat. Communications down, staples, REITs and utilities, right? So with the market trading to all time highs, it looks like there's some less call for the defensive areas of the market. I do think it actually, given some of the divergences that were talked about, I think it does make sense to look to add a little bit of defensive exposure to your portfolio, right? We still want to remain long, um, but I think there's some opportunities in the consumer staples sector. For those of you who read my market survival guide every Tuesday, we talked about that this week. So again, we talked about strong stocks, strong industry groups. This is great. And it shows me uh, that I'm now thinking like an algorithm because I highlight aerospace and defense in my note this morning. And that's what our algorithm has given us as our industry in focus today. Uh, obviously, the note is written long before this show is put together. Aerospace and defense, which over the past six months has outperformed the S&P 500 by 6.4%. Power bar ratio is very strong. 20 bullish or very bullish stocks for only one bearish or very bearish stocks. It's currently ranked number two of 21 subsectors that we looked at. It has moved down one slot over the past week. Indicative names there, names that you want to look at as potential long ideas, not just run out and buy. We always do the analysis. Astronics, ATRO, very bullish rating. Curtis Wright, CW, very bullish rating. And Textron, TXT, also with a very bullish cheek and power gauge rating. And let's take a look at Curtis Wright here. Very bullish stock, strong trend, strong industry group. Very bullish stock outperforming the market. Dynamic duo and gear, market and model are in agreement. Now, we've rounded out of an oversold position and we're middle of the road right here, uh, but still moving higher. Intensely bullish money flow. Stock is above a rising long-term trend line and we have a breakout through the 125 level. Curtis Wright, for you more, if you're more aggressive, I think you can own Curtis Wright CW. Do note that earnings are scheduled to be reported next Wednesday. For the more conservative investors and you want to wait for the oversold reading, I can't fault you for that either, right? As long as you have your process that works for you. Uh, I'm just highlighting this as a type of name that we want to consider. Uh, I am well aware of the fact that they are scheduled to report next week. We, give you, we tell you the dates right here, right? Right at the top of our charts, we tell you when they're scheduled to report. Curtis Wright scheduled to report earnings next Wednesday, the 31st. But this is a good-looking stock. 
Taking a look at what's trending now. Yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. Uh, pretty much all earnings related. Edwards up nearly 10%. GWW up over 9%. Right, and that's been a tradition. That's been a weak stock, so a bit of a change there. Discover Financial (DFS) up nearly nine percent. And for those of you who follow along with my Market Survival Guide weekly, you'll recognize Discover uh, as an open bullish idea. So a nice trade in on earnings there. UPS up eight point six six percent following their print in Texas Instruments, moving higher seven and a half percent and then just another semiconductor name that trades well after earnings semis have done well and that's a key driver for the market you know how i feel about that we'll probably touch on that in tomorrow's show loser side of the board rol down ten and a half percent earnings related market access down nine percent earnings related amphenol aph loses six percent following their earnings and sc loses nearly six percent on their earnings and fleer F-L-I-R, their earnings report was enough to send the stock lower by nearly 5%. And it's a Thursday in earnings season, so that means it's busy. But first, let's look at yesterday's surprises. ServiceNow beats by two cents. Boeing beat by over a buck, but the stock traded lower. Tesla missed last night. Stock trading down 12% here in the pre-market. Uh, PayPal beat by 12 cents, but guidance was a little bit weak. Stock trading lower to by about 3% in the pre-market. And to be perfectly fair, um, I call out the good ideas and the ones that uh, haven't always worked out initially. PayPal is an open bullish idea in our market survival guide, but uh, it still actually looks good. And um, we'll see if the stock can gain some traction here this morning. Freeport McMoran beat by a penny. Huge day of earnings today. Uh, bullish stocks of interest before the open Comcast looks like their numbers are out and they beat T-Mobile trading higher. LH is a name that uh, is interesting to us. Baxter, big name in med tech after the close bullish stocks, all eyes on Intel, other names that make sense, Allergan and Aflac. Neutral stocks, right? We don't want to just disregard them because they're neutral, right? Because some of them are bellwethers. Let's take a look at VMC before the opening, HBAN and Bristol Myers. Neutral stocks after the close of interest, all eyes will be on Google. But we have Starbucks reporting as well, MGM and Amazon, another big name there, Amazon. Before the open today, 3M is a bearish stock. We talked about breath metrics being mixed. That's what we're touching on in our note today. So here's what we have. In the top panel, we have the percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving average. And we can see that that's broken to new all-time highs with price. However, shorter-term metrics, percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average, here's that negative divergence that I was talking about. Failed to make new highs with the S&P 500. And I could have just as easily put up a chart of the percentage of stocks above their 20-day moving averages for something that's much more shorter term. And you would see a similar, actually a slightly deeper divergence. So what does that mean? It means the long-term trends are intact, right? There is a healthy majority of stocks, 77 to 80% of stocks are above their 200-day moving averages. That's big. Right? That tells us that a healthy majority of stocks are in long-term uptrends. But we want to be aware of what's happening in the short term because what happens in the short term could change the long term over time. Right, So we're aware of the divergences. But again, 2950 is that level we're watching for the S&P 500. These divergences are something to be aware of. But until the market breaks 2950, we stay the course. Focus on leading industries, right? Hey, I told you we would talk about space and defense. Here's the XAR breaking to all-time highs in a move that's confirmed by momentum. Look at the RSI here, right? We've talked about this time and time again. You should be experts on RSI by now. When this RSI is holding above 50, that is a sign that momentum is holding in bullish ranges, really when it's holding above 40, and that is lending a momentum confirmation to the strength that we're seeing in the price of the XAR, the Aerospace and Defense ETF. And on a relative basis, we can see a nice uptrend since April. So obviously, this is a leading industry group. So we want to focus on leading stocks like Hexel, bullish stock, strong trend, strong industry group, outperforming the market, overspot, oversold indicator, moving higher in an oversold position, intensely bullish money flow. I gave you the checklist here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hexel is my bullish stock of the day and my note to cheek and analytics clients because I think it looks compelling as a long idea. That's going to wrap it up for today. I hope everybody has a great Thursday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash today.
sign up for the email. You can follow along with this show.